When you think of explosive power training, you're probably thinking of sprints, jumps, Olympic lifts, med ball throws, and other explosive dynamic movements. But today, we're gonna explore if there's actually a technique that unlocks explosive power that a lot of people are overlooking because it's not fast and dynamic, but rather completely static. We're gonna dive into the science of isometric training and find out if using strong, static muscle contractions for developing explosive power is a myth or reality. First, we'll cover the science. Second, we'll look into what challenging progressive isometric training actually looks like. And then third, we'll compare how isometric training stacks up against dynamic training methods. And lastly, we'll show you the training decisions that NFL, NBA, and Olympic athletes and more are making so that you can decide if you can implement any of these training methods that we discuss into your own training. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. Let's start with the science of isometric muscle contractions. There are three primary types of muscle contractions. A concentric muscle contraction involves muscle shortening. For example, the upward phase of a bicep curl or a squat. The lengthening phase of a muscle contraction is called the eccentric phase. For example, lowering down into a squat or the lowering phase of a bicep curl. The third type of muscle contraction is isometric. This involves a static muscle contraction without change in joint angle. For example, holding a squat or holding a bicep curl at 90 degrees. Now, let me ask you a question. When an athlete is sprinting at max velocity, what type of muscle contraction is the calf muscle going through, for example? It might seem like the calf would go through an eccentric and then a concentric muscle contraction similar to a calf raise, but Actually, when we're moving really fast, something entirely different happens. With only one-tenth of a second to produce force, the muscle doesn't have time to lengthen and shorten. Instead, the muscle contracts isometrically. And it's actually really important that the muscle can contract isometrically and hold its static length because that's what allows the tendon to quickly stretch and shorten doing what we call the stretch shortening cycle. This process is important because the tendon is very elastic, meaning that it stores and releases energy really well. This allows you to sprint far faster than you could if you had to rely on the speed of muscle lengthening and shortening. And believe it or not, this same thing happens with many explosive sport movements. A baseball pitch requires a strong isometric contraction of the anterior shoulder muscles. A dunk in basketball requires a strong isometric quad contraction. Or making a cut in football, soccer, lacrosse, or really any field sport requires strong isometric contractions through the plant leg to redirect force. So while sport movements look very fast and very dynamic, at the level of the muscle, often what's going on is really strong isometric muscle contractions. So with that said, let's move on to part two and answer the question, how do you actually make isometric training challenging and progressive so you can see carryover to these fast dynamic sport performance movements? Because maybe your experience with isometrics is just basic planks, wall sits, and glute bridges, and it never really felt very hard. The truth is though, that isometric training goes far beyond those basic movements and it can be very challenging. So let's cover two different types of isometric contractions. Type number one is overcoming isometrics and then type number two is yielding isometrics. Overcoming isometrics involve pushing into an immovable object. One example of this is a mid-thigh pull. This is a great exercise for maximizing force production of the posterior chain developing neural drive and recruitment of fast twitch motor units and building strength at specific joint angles that are relevant for athletic movements like jumping, sprinting, or change of direction. Another example is the knee iso push, very similar to the mid thigh pull, but it can actually involve 30 to 50% higher force output because grip strength isn't a limiting factor. This movement has really great carryover to improving running mechanics. And I would even go so far as to say one good set of a knee iso push is often worth more than 100 sets of mini band clamshells. Another example is the hip iso push. 
This is a great way to test and train the hamstrings. It's important to strengthen the hamstrings at this specific angle where the hamstring is lengthened because that's where they're highly stressed during the swing phase of sprinting. So as you can see, these are all examples of overcoming isometrics that are truly challenging and can push you to that really high force output. And hopefully seeing some of the science of this helps you understand why fast twitch muscle fibers aren't just activated by moving quickly. In fact, what you really need to activate those fast twitch motor units, those big groups of powerful fibers, is that high force output and isometrics are a really great way to ramp all the way up to that max force output. Okay, but let's also cover the second category of isometrics and that is yielding isometrics. Yielding isometrics involve holding a muscle contraction against gravity. Some examples include a split squat isometric hold, which is great for building strength and fatigue resistance, primarily in the quads and the glutes. It's also a really great way to enhance patellar tendon strength and health. Another example of a yielding isometric is the barbell single leg calf raise hold, and this is great for building strength and stiffness through the Achilles tendon to improve running and jumping. These are typically done with longer duration holds, for example, 30 seconds, and they do often require some degree of balance. This can improve single leg stability, and we know that poor single leg stability is a contributing factor to a lot of sport injuries. What you can probably tell about all of these specific isometrics that I chose as examples is that you can load them heavy and make them really challenging. This is important if you wanna see these carry over to improving jump height, sprint speed, and athletic performance. Okay, now you're probably wondering though, how and when do you use overcoming isometrics versus yielding isometrics? So this is what I generally recommend. Perform overcoming isometrics with maximal force output for just a few seconds. For example, the four for four. Not the Wendy's bag, but rather this. Pick any of these movements, like the mid-thigh pull, the hip iso push, and perform them with a single leg. Four seconds on, four seconds rest, repeat four times, and then rest for about two to four minutes between sets. Repeat this for a total of, you guessed it, four sets. So this would look like a mid-thigh pull on the left, four seconds, right, four seconds, left, four seconds, back and forth. That's one set, you rest for that two to four minutes, and then you repeat that four more times. And this would give you a total of 64 seconds of maximal contractions, which is a pretty good total volume to aim for. You're gonna aim on the lower end for 30 seconds or on the higher end for 90 seconds, but I think the four for four is a pretty good overall protocol for most people. It's easy to remember and it's effective. And I would recommend doing these toward the start of your training session when you feel fresh. This will make sure that these are really that maximal output. And there's an advanced training technique that now that we understand isometrics, we can dive into. And that involves pairing isometrics with dynamic jumping movements. For example, performing a set of band assisted jumps in between your sets of isometrics. This is a great method for improving vertical jump. And it would be very similar to doing the isometric alone, just during that two to four minutes of rest, perform about six to eight jumps as fast and as explosively as possible. So to be really clear, you're picking an isometric exercise like that knee iso push, the hip iso push, or the mid thigh pull, you're doing that for four seconds each side, four times, and then while you rest, you're knocking out those six to eight reps of a maximal explosive jump. And you'll probably notice immediately that doing those isometrics makes you feel a lot more explosive, and if you're measuring your jump height, you might even see an immediate five or even 10% improvement. Again, overall, a really great way to improve athleticism and vertical jump. Now, before I forget, I wanna mention that if you haven't already, make sure you join our Friday Four newsletter not only do you get a free strength and conditioning program template when you join, but you'll also receive our email every Friday with four strength and conditioning tips like the ones in this video. A lot of coaches find it helpful and I think you will as well, so I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so to summarize what we've learned so far, overall, the benefit of overcoming isometrics with a fixed bar is that you can push as hard as you can for a really short period of time, around three to four seconds. This provides a really high nervous system training stimulus without a lot of fatigue. Then for yielding isometrics, I would program these toward the end of a training session. That's because these are much more fatiguing and challenging. Holding a position against gravity requires more activation of stabilizing muscle groups and more metabolic fatigue. That said, it causes different beneficial training adaptations. For example, improving tendon strength, 
improving single leg stability, and improving fatigue resistance. I would recommend performing these for 30 seconds with a challenging load that you can barely hold for more than 30 seconds. If you could hold that weight for 45 seconds or a minute, then you probably need to add more weight. I typically recommend two to four sets of 30 seconds with two to four minutes of rest between sets. And I did wanna mention as well, although we're covering the application and how you actually do this in the gym, rather than reviewing specific research articles, I will link to some of the best research articles that I've read on this over the past few years, again, in the description below. Okay, but now let's move on to part three and find out how isometric training specifically stacks up against dynamic training. And a lot of research like this study compares the effects of isometric versus dynamic strength. So here's my overall take. Only an amateur coach would declare a winner and say that one is universally better than the other. More realistically, there are pros and cons to each and combining them provides more benefits than either one in isolation. Like we've been discussing already, overcoming isometrics are particularly beneficial for getting high neuromuscular recruitment and strength stimulus with little fatigue. The ability to push into a fixed barbell very quickly can also improve rate of force development. To get that same strong stimulus with a dynamic movement often takes a lot more volume, a lot more joint stress, and a lot longer recovery time. This makes isometrics particularly beneficial in season for athletes who wanna minimize stress but still get a strong stimulus in a time efficient way. However, dynamic movements do tend to be superior for muscle hypertrophy, for example. So they may be a better choice for off season or for time periods where athletes are trying to build lean body mass. And as a reminder, we discussed earlier how you can combine isometrics and dynamic movements into one program with contrast sets between heavy isometrics and dynamic jumps. So as you can see, overall, there's a benefit to balancing the right stimulus of each depending on the phase of training that you're in. And to bring this full circle and make this really applicable for you, I dug up some info to show you exactly how some high-level athletes are using this information. And just so you know, some of this comes from a Sportsmith podcast, which I will link in the description below. And basically in that podcast, Matt Van Dyke the strength conditioning coach for the Houston Texans, discusses how he implements isometrics into his athletes' training. Because you may be surprised to find out that NFL players have an entire phase with weeks of just basic isometric training. The Houston Texans start their off season with isometric holds of five minutes. For example, push-up position holds, glute bridge holds, wall sit holds, dumbbell prone rows, and other basic movements like that just held for up to five minutes. Over time, these are progressed down to heavier holds for just 30 seconds. Matt Van Dyke talks about the importance of basic isometric strength training to set the foundation for the more flashy, exciting, dynamic work that typically comes later. So while a lot of young coaches and athletes just see all the fast dynamic work like this, it's important to know that even athletes at the highest level of performance with really great strength are taking time throughout the year to go back and set the foundation with the basics. So maybe in the past you viewed isometrics as too beginner or too basic for you or your athletes. But I hope this video and laying out some of the science and also the application of this shows you how you can make isometric training really challenging and how it can fit into an overall training program. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.